Hi everyone! This is Shauna from the Shelton Timberland Library and today I wanted to talk to you about how to do a process art activity at home with things that you probably already have around. But first, what is process art? So process art focuses on the process of making art rather than the end result. And so an example of a art activity that wouldn't be considered process art is gluing together circles and drawing a face to make a snowman. And that's a fun activity, but it doesn't accomplish the same things that process art activities accomplish. So process art is valuable because it gives children the chance to explore and create and problem solve. And in fact, research suggests that children who are exposed to art are more likely to think creatively and to be innovators. So this is an excellent chance for them to just not have any rules about what they're making and explore and think. And you can ask questions to help them think through what they're doing. So let's get on to what you need to do this activity. So first, of course, you need some kind of paint. You need paint brushes. You will need water to rinse your paint brushes and also um, plants, of course. I have fern fronds and some weeds and flowers. An important note, kids, when you're gathering plants, make sure that if you're picking anything that you ask permission. Not everything in the yard is okay to pull up. And for our adults, remember that we want to think creatively and explore. So don't worry about if things are going to work or not. Gather lots of supplies so that you can problem solve as you're using them. You also want something to pour your paint on. Um, of course, you could use a plate or a bowl. I'm using a plastic sleep protector. And you want some kind of paper. I am using eight and a half by 11 um, printer paper. And I would recommend doing um, something at least that size, if not bigger. And if you do wanna try something bigger, taking apart a grocery bag can give you a nice big sheet for kids to work on. And that's helpful for kids because um, preschoolers and younger, we're still working on those fine motor skills and having a bigger space to work on makes it easier for them. The other thing is this activity can get pretty messy. So you might wanna put down a tablecloth. I have laid down newsprint to work on. So let's get started. For my first activity, I am going to be painting my plants and then pressing them down to leave prints. So let's start with fern frond and I'm going to paint this one, this fun turquoise color. So I like to pour my paint directly on the plants, but of course it works just as well if you have the paint separate and dip your brush in the paint and then paint. Okay, so I've got that one covered. And I am gonna press this down. And this project can get very messy. I've already got paint all over my hands. Um, that's fantastic. Let kids play and make messes. Um, it's, it's really great for them to have these uh, very sensory experiences. But if you have a child that doesn't like mess and is not enjoying that kind of activity, you can also use a sheet of paper on top to press the paint into your sheet of paper. All right, so I got that one. Let's do, always like a bit of yellow with turquoise. And this time, I'm gonna do a nice big leaf. Let's rinse off our brush. All right. Okay, and I made my first print. Oh, it's a little 
All right. So there's my first one. Keep working on it. Um, it let kids just keep adding layers until they're happy with the final result. So that's project one. Let's try the next one. So we're still gonna be doing plants, but this time we're gonna put the plants down and then paint on top, pulling them away to reveal, to reveal the white spaces. So let's get that. And I'm gonna try a flower. It might not work, but like I said, this is about exploring and finding out what works. And if kids do run into problems, things aren't turning out the way they wanted them to, then remember that we wanna model um, thinking through things. So ask them questions to try and problem solve. Um, encourage them when they're experimenting. Okay, so I think that's enough. And this time let's do red. Okay, and so that's my first layer on this one. And I have some nice, interesting shapes. But again, this one's a great one for layering so we can keep adding colors and layers and see how that turns out. So those are my two plant-based activities. But what if for some reason you don't have access to plants or you've already done that and you want another version? Okay, so for project two, we are gonna be working with things that we have around the home. So again, be creative, experiment. Um, so some things that I have. Uh, I have bubble wrap and it can make great prints. I also have cotton balls and Q-tips and um, plastic bags are great for crunching up and painting with, but Look around your home, see what trash you have, what things that, you know, aren't going to be damaged by paint and what of those things are good for painting on and making marks with. So let's see, this is one of the pieces I've done before. So you've got the bubble wrap, the um, cotton balls, little tiny dots where I use the Q-tips, um, so let's see what we can do this time. So get a new sheet of paper. Okay, so let's start with the bubble wrap. And um, this time, let's do some red. And some turquoise. And a little bit of yellow. Okay, and again, I am going to rinse my brush between colors, but maybe your child isn't interested in doing that. Um, that's a good chance to talk about what's happening to the colors. Are they changing? How are the colors mixing? What new colors are they making? If they make a new color, ask them what that color is made of, what other colors they use to make to get that new color. Okay, so I've got my paint on my bubble wrap and let's press that in. All right, so that's pretty. Let's do a few more. There's still some paint on there. I'm gonna just cover the whole page. Okay. And then 
Let's try our bag and I think a little more turquoise on this would be fun. I'm going to put my paint down and then dab into it and let's see what happens when I mark with that. All right, that's fun, but I think we need some more yellow to brighten this up. So let's do a little yellow on a cotton ball. Let's see. All right, there's my yellow cotton ball. And then finally, let's do some more red and I'm gonna use my Q-tip and I'm gonna do some wavy lines. All right, and there is the piece I made. And again, this is gonna be a lot of fun to work on top of all of these things. You could even let it dry and then keep working on top of that. So I hope you've gotten some ideas on how you can do process art projects at home. And I hope this is a lot of fun for you. If you wanna see some of our other YouTube videos, we post Monday through Saturday. Um, all of the uh, younger kids videos are posted at 10.30 every day. Thank you all so much for watching. Bye.